Welcome back to part two of putting old Humpty Dumpty back together again. I got my goofy older brother, much older brother, right here. He's gonna help me today. We're gonna start off with cutting them poles off to length. Uh, I gotta get my vehicles out of the way. Well, I think what we're going to do, start right over in that corner. It's the high spot. We're going to measure 14 foot up. That's how high I'm going on the sides. And uh, mark it, you know, run us a 2 before 4 2B6. Level it, and then we'll have our marks on each post. Um, the roof's 412 pitch, so it's going to be about 20 foot uh, high in the middle. The other one was 212, I believe. It was a lot flatter. But these trusses... They only make them in the 412, as far as I know. Well, at least this company. So, that's what I had to go with. Anyway, let me get over here and we'll we'll get to measuring and getting to cutting and all that stuff. Well, there's been a slight change of plans. You know, we was going to measure 14 feet up. Make us a mark. Put a 2 before there and then come over here level it, you know, and uh, fasten it to that one. And then come on around like that. Well... I'm not putting anything across this back wall right now. We're not. We're leaving these posts. We're not going to cut them. So, in order to transfer this measurement to this side, well, I had to get my transit out. And uh, what we're going to do is whatever this hits on my on my stick there. He's holding. It's a. It's an old. I think an old <laughs> umbrella pole uh, with a uh, tape measure taped to it. Wherever we hit there, that'll be our mark. And then we'll add whatever to get 14 foot. And then we'll just come on around all the other poles and mark them. That's the only way I know to do it. We are at 50 inches. So I'll leave it right where it's at. Level. All right, there's our mark. That's at 50 inches. And, you know, I'm going 14 foot. Um, so 50 Took away from 14 foot, it's 118 inches. So from that mark up, I'll put a mark at 118 inches. That'd be where I cut it off. Then wherever this, wherever that transit hits here, uh, that's where I know I'll go up another 118 inches and we'll just keep doing that all the way around. All right, where does this one hit? 53 and one quarter of an inch. Change of plans again. Um, I decided to go ahead and put some banding up here for two reasons. Uh, one, to check my marks that we just made, you know, from from the ground up here, make sure that's level and putting a level on there, you know, as we go. And two, to help stabilize those poles for uh, when we go to putting the trusses on them. 
See my bubble right there? She's within the lines, that's good enough for me. I'll tell you what else I need to do is help with the cutting and take this right here and go all the way around it. Y'all look at that level right there. You can't get more perfect than that, but we won't look at the top of them posts. <laughs> They're just a wee bit crooked. Well, it's done got dark on me. I didn't get done what I wanted to. I was hoping to get them uh, poles notched on the top for the trusses. Didn't get that done. It's just gonna be slow going, uh, you know, when you don't have a lot of help. And I'm only getting them a couple hours in the afternoon. And building something this tall and you gotta use scaffolding and well, it's just gonna slow you down. Tell you what, <laughs> my chainsaw, I got to sharpen the chain on there. Good gracious. I could have done better with a butter knife, I believe. <laughs> Scalping is a little bit too short, too. I couldn't hardly reach it right here. We'll have to work on that. Um, it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so we won't get nothing done tomorrow. Hopefully Saturday, I'll have a little more time. A lovely assistant will be here to help me Saturday. So we might, we might get to trust the set Saturday. We'll just have to see. Well, it's the next day, and the rain, well, it ain't been much, but it's been just enough to where I can't get out here and do nothing. Well, it's finally gone for a little while anyway. So I figured, you know, I told you these scaffolds were just a little too short. Well, we got, these are seven footers, roughly. We got two five footers to go 10 foot. So I've been busy, you know, tearing these seven footers down to put the two fives up. <laughs> then my brain actually started working. And I said, you dummy, leave the sevens and put the fives on top. That gets you even taller where you can get the purling screwed in out here in the middle. So, uh, of course, I decided to do that after um, 
I got these uh, seven footers tore down, so I'm put, <laughs> putting them back up. Then I'm going to put the five footers on top of them. Yes, sir. That's how my brain works, people. I already got my 50 foot tape. Now it's got a little hook on it here. I'm going to try to hook it on that post, and then I'll just have to come back over here and climb this pole. Fingers crossed that I don't fall off the ladder. If I do, well, somebody call 911. Well, this first span is 35 feet, seven inches. It should be 35, nine, but I mean, we're working with telephone poles. They're 14 foot long. Being an inch out, you know, at the top on either side, <laughs> I ain't gonna complain about that, no, sir. Uh, I'll just push that post out one inch on either side. Ain't gonna worry about it. I'm gonna check a few more of them uh, just to make sure because of, you know, MLS, you know how that is. And then uh, I'll, uh, well, I don't know how I'm going. I got to get this scaffolding put up before I can start marking and cutting because I'm not I'm not using the chainsaw off ladder. I just ain't going to do it. So I'm, I may be at a standstill till I can get these uh, scaffoldings put up. I tell you what, I might do. I might just use a tractor. See if I can't get the scaffolding put up. That's that's what I'll do. Oh my head! Oh, that hurts so bad. Woo. Dang. Y'all look at that right there. 35, 8, and 5 eighths, somewhere in there. Not bad, not bad at all. I tell you what, <laughs> that's a lot of ladder climbing. Um, I measured the first three. Hey, y'all remember the, the first one was 35, 7. The second one was 35, 9, exactly where it should be. And then that one was 35, uh, 8, and 5 eighths. Close enough. Ain't even going to worry about the last two. I'm going to pretend they're 35, 9, all of them. Ain't no, we can bowl them out an inch or so. That ain't gonna hurt nothing. Uh, I'll use my math, you know, to figure out my notch and all that. I gotta get this put together so I can get up there and mark and cut. Uh, let me see if I can figure out how to use this tractor to get them up there. Well, the rain's done moved back in. I think it's gonna be here the rest of the evening, all night. So, I think I'm done. I'm gonna call it a day. Uh, I did get all the scaffolding up and the bracing. I got three of the boards up on top there. There's one still on the ground. I'll get it tomorrow. And that scaffolding has got little extensions that come out to the side. That'll help me out, because I'm like three foot from the pole right now. Put them little extensions on there, I'll be just fine. So hopefully tomorrow we'll have sunshine I'll get them poles notched. We'll move scaffolding over here, do the same thing. And then by then, hopefully my lovely assistant will be here 
with this crane truck and we'll get all these uh, trusses set. Well, it's the next day again. We got some sunshine today. It's a lovely day to build a shop. So I got to climb up on them scaffolding there, go to market and notch my poles. But before I do that, I got to sharpen my very, very dull chainsaw. All right, I'm up here on the scaffolding, way up in the sky with the birds. There'll probably be one fly by. There goes one right there. Um, <laughs> I, got to, I got to notch this pole for the trusses. I got to come from this two before here uh, in four inches. I got to go down 15 inches and just remove. I'm using the chainsaw, by the way. Uh, I think that'll be just fine. I was going to try to slot it, but eh, I think it'll be all right. We all probably can't see that, but I got everything marked. I took my level right here over here to get this side mark all the way down to here. Please get the chainsaw and try to cut this out. Um, if I cut my leg off, well, y'all, y'all call 911 for me. Well, I got one cut. It may or may not be a little bit crooked. We won't talk about that. Uh, I got four more on this side. I got five over there. Can't do it talking to y'all, so I got to get busy. All right, here's the deal. Um, I don't like that right there. I'm not a fan of that at all. I just like it's gonna break off. So what we're gonna do, I got this marked up. I got marks running right down through the middle. Just notch the middle out. It'll take a little more time. You know, I may have to do some chiseling and whatever, but I think that'll be a lot more betterer and make me feel better anyway so let me see if i can get this sawed out real quick all righty here's my very lovely crooked lines that i just cut let me say this first do not try this. What I'm doing right here with this chainsaw, no, sir. It's extremely dangerous. Please don't do this at home. Um, uh, you know, a skill saw, it won't cut that deep. Uh, so, you know, I cut down, cut in, and cut in. I'm going to get me some kind of chisel and a hummer. I'm going to try to knock that out. It ain't going to be fun, but I just feel better about this. Got a little more meat on the pole. So, let me get me a hummer and a chisel and go to pecking on this. Oh, yeah. Well, that didn't take very much toll to get most of that knocked out. Now I need a chisel. As soon as I get one of them, I'm going to try to peck the rest of that out of there. I believe that's the way we're going to do it. I just feel, feel a lot more better doing it that way. Do what? Yeah. Put, put that back on your head. I'll put it on your head. This is my bucket-headed uh, great-nephew, Mike, and he's, he's over here helping me today. I don't know why he's got a bucket on the head. You'll have to ask him. <laughs> well, the art is, uh, <laughs> it ain't pretty. Don't, don't be making fun of my chisel work. This, this is what I'm working with, fellas. <laughs> As you can tell, I am not a uh, woodworker. Um, I just use what I got, you know, that's what I do. It looks like a beaver gnawed on it, but I think it'll be all right. I feel much better having this meat here on the outside. I think we'll be all right. I got two more to do over here. Well, I got one side notched. They're not fun to do, but I feel a lot better about them. I want to reinforce them with some kind of steel. I just, I don't like that at all. Uh, moving on to the other side. Well, as you can see, you know, I need to notch this side. Well, I got bracing in the way. So the only thing I know to do is get even more dangerous than that scaffolding. I'm gonna get in the bucket of my tractor. Hopefully my nephew right here don't kill me. I'm an untrained professional. 
Well, I got all of my post slotted for my trusses. My lovely assistant has got his crane, Skyhook 85 up here. Um, he, he's making me run the crane because he don't want y'all talking about him when I run it wrong. Uh, you know, several y'all gave me pointers on how to run it. Well, I don't forgot what you said. So I'm gonna run it the best I can. Uh, he's gonna be running up the ladder, drilling holes and putting bolts in and all that. Anyway, let's uh, let me get the camera set up. We'll get to put some trusses up. We're having a minor issue starting off. One bolt uh, is going right through that banding up there. So we're having to take the banding off, put the bolt in, put the banding back on. Nothing, nothing major. Just sort of slows us down a little bit. on it, Chad. I'm going to take mine out. We'll see if we can come in together. Hammer. 
Well, we may or may not have an issue. <laughs> that truss right there looked like a rainbow. I gotta get something hooked to it and get it pulled back that way and then get these two braced to each other. And that's probably about all we're gonna get done today. We're fixing to run out of daylight. But yeah, that's, well, let me get back over here. <laughs> I'm in line with the poles right there. <laughs> it's it's bowed out three or four feet. That ain't, that ain't worth crap there. Well, today's Sunday. Sunday's a day rest. I don't work on Sunday. I just want to come out here, though, and uh, sort of show y'all what's going on, explain what's going on. This end truss, it's bowed right now, probably a foot, uh, you know, that way. Well, it was bowed way, way out here, like three or four feet. Uh, and that was very concerning. I thought these trusses were going to be a lot stronger than what they are. Well, let me say this first. I'm not a builder. Never fooled with these angle iron steel trusses i put up a few wood ones my lovely assistant he builds shops for people around here pretty regularly but he's never done these type of trusses either uh anyway i mean it was bowed way out here very concerning so i decided to get me a piece of rope and tie to it pull the thing back somewhat straight you can see that rope you know i got it tied to the truck right over there did the same thing with this one it was bowed some but it wasn't real bad but I just wanted to pull it back straight for now. I think what we should have done, and my lovely assistant, he he said this is what he does with the wooden trusses. Um, run a brace from out here all the way down to the ground. Leave it, you know, until you get everything up. You've got to have this one straight. This is what you're starting out with. You gotta have it straight and right, or none of the other ones will be right. So I think that's what's gonna have to happen tomorrow was, uh, we gotta get that one right. But well, let me show you this though. When I pulled the rope straight, this pole over here, let me get over and I'll show you. When we pulled that truss straight, this post here, well you can see where where the band and the brace busted loose. It's it shoved that pole out. I know a good two inches at least. Well, you can see down here at the ground, it's it pulled away from that probably an inch. Well, if you remember. The first video, remember how I said this corner post here was all twisted, you know, concerned about it. I think that's what's going on. That pole there was so crooked that it it, it just got this first one all out of whack. Uh, so we got to get that straight first. That's, you know, got to. So we're going to put a brace there, I believe. And he thinks that he can borrow a 40-foot boom lift. And that, if he can, that... That's going to be wonderful. It's going to make this so much easier. Getting all these purling up. Oh, uh, yeah. That's going to be wonderful. We can do that. And it'll help. You know, we can get up there with the boom lift, get them straight, get the purling up. And, well, I this thing got to be a lot better. Anyway, I just want to let you all know where we was at. And tomorrow, whilst I wait on help, I'm going to try to fix those two posts over there. You know, where I just sawed them in half, basically. I'm going to brace them up with some steel and... Uh, there's a few other things that I can do whilst I wait. But anyway, that's that's where we're at right now. Let me show you this real quick. This pole right here. That's the corner pole that's all crooked and cockeyed. Uh, well, if you get in in line, you get them all lined up. Y'all, it's probably hard for y'all to see. But if you get it lined up, they're all pretty much perfectly in line now. Uh, so that tells me if we push that pole out and they're all in line now, well that pole. It was really in. You know, pushed it out two inches in the middle. Well, it's liable to come out three or four at the top. So that little fella there, he was causing us issues. That's why that truss was so bowed. Uh, anyway, just want to show you all that. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get all kind of comments from the know-it-alls telling us how we've done it wrong and their way is the only way. Well, let me well let me say this first. A couple weeks ago, you know, I got a few comments like that on the last video of Dude. I had to block a couple. I'm not gonna put up with smart elicky stuff, know-it-all stuff, telling me I'm stupid and wrong. I'm not, I'm not gonna put up with it. 
If you've got suggestions, that's fine. I don't mind that. It's the way you say it, I reckon. Don't be a know-it-all. Don't be a smarty. Uh, Y'all should know by now, I have my way of doing stuff, and that's how I'm gonna do it. Uh, well, let me say this, and then I'll shut up about this. Uh, what is there, like eight billion people on this planet? Well, to think that your way is the only way to do something, that's, that's pretty haughty, yes, sir. Uh, you do it your way, I'll do it my way, we'll be A-OK. -okay. Anyway, I'm, I'll be happy when we get this done. I'll have me a shot. Here's what I'm doing this morning. I'm trying to get all this done before my help gets here this afternoon. This is my reinforcement plates for the top of the two poles that I mangled up pretty much. This is the bottom piece. It's gonna be an upright, 15 inches long, roughly. Then I'm having some gussets on the side, welded all together. Three uh, lag bolts right here. And of course the two bolts that hold the uh, truss in will hold the, this upright plate. Let me get uh, let me get tested done and we'll go uh, we'll go test fit it. How about that? This is cut on the angle because the top of my pole it may or may not be cut on the angle. Yes, we got an answer. Now what I got to do is go up there on the pole get this angle like it needs to be. I'll have to take my comma and whoop on it a little bit. So I'll be right back. All right, there is the proper angle. I'm gonna tack it here to keep it from moving. Then I'll weld this side up. All right, now what I got to do is get me a gusset made on each side. I got laid up here. I'm gonna make a mark right here, make a mark right here, draw me a line, cut it, weld it, do the same for the other side. Then we'll be able to put it on the pole. All Well, if you plug the welder in. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm going to lag it with these here 3 8 lag bolts. Three holes. Let me drill them out real quick. And we'll go put it on the pole. With RTS, I don't have no fancy smancy CMC plasma cutter, so this will have to do. Uh, I blew me a couple holes in the middle for the truss bolts. Uh, let's go put it on the post and see what it looks like. While she's lagged now to the pole, I think it's going to do pretty doggone good. Uh, with my engineering degree, I'm rating this at about a 9.7 on the Richter scale for tornadoes and uh, hurricanes. I think it'll be all right. I don't believe it get blown away. Well, I got both of my... Um, Reinforcing plates on the pole screw down. I think they'll be just fine and dandily Then I made me a couple of lifting hooks right here Out of square tube and then a piece of pipe there um, That's what we'll do. We'll hook her up Just like that right there pick it up and then when I get ready to unhook it I'll just lower it down slide her out just like that right there uh, It's a lot better than climbing way up yonder on a ladder trying to unhook the thing. Yes, sir, I think that'd be a lot better. These, according to my engineering degree, they are rated at approximately 16 and a half ton. But these only weigh maybe 300 pounds, so I think we'll be okay. <laughs> um, my lowly assistant Mason called me a little while ago. We did a little brainstorming, and we're gonna do something different here. I'll show you, let me walk down there and I'll show you. Well, you see my scaffold in there. It's on that side, outside there. Well, there's really no need in having it scaffold. We can do what we need to do on that pole on a ladder, you know, 
just like we did these two here. So what we're gonna do, this truck, I'm gonna move it out of the way for now. Oh, I gotta untie my ropes. I hope I remember to do that. If I drive off with their ropes, tied, it'll destroy them two trusses. Y'all don't let me forget that. Uh, anyway, we'll move this truck out of the way. We're gonna bring that scaffolding in here right in the center and it'll be tall enough that we can get to these trusses. Yes, sir. And we won't have to have no uh, lift or nothing like that. Um, we're gonna straighten that one out first and you know, brace it down to the ground like I talked about and then purlins. Then we'll set our next one, purlins, then set our next one, purlins, just on and on like that. But yes, sir, that's the main thing. Get that scaffolding in here, so. Let me get these uh, outriggers pushed back in, get this truck out of the way first. Well, I played musical chairs. I got my scaffolding over here. Then got the truck back in here too. Uh, we ain't got about an hour left of daylight. Ain't no need to even fooling with it. Uh, tomorrow, first thing, I gotta get that truss where it needs to be. And then we'll go from there. Well, I've decided to work on a tractor. What little bit of daylight I got left. I have developed a pinhole leak in a power steering line and you can barely get a dead blame wrench on it. <laughs> I'm getting maybe a sixteenth of a turn at a time of that wrench and then I had to flop it over and turn another sixteenth. It'll take about 30 minutes to get that off. When I do, <laughs> I'll get that line out, we'll braise it up and stick it back on there, I reckon. All right, well, I finally got it off about three years later, uh, fixing to braise it up. I wanna show you all a little trick. It's got a little pinhole right here. You want to get some suds up there. And then all you got to do is blow air in there. It should squirt or puff or something. Watch. See that little bit of soap can fly in that camera? That's where the hole is. The reason I'm doing that is I want to know, you know, where it's at. And then after I brace it up, I'm going to check it again to make sure I actually got the hole closed up. That little bitty puff. All right, let me see if I can't brace it up. All right, let me do a little soap test here. See if we see any bubbles or anything. I don't see anything. I think I got it. One thing I know to do is go put it on track. Martez right there. I don't see no drippy drip, but I think we got it. That's awesome. All right, here's what I'm working on today. Trying to get this first truss where it's supposed to go. This is how I decided to do it. Uh, I hooked me a string to that pole, to that pole there. I done took the string down. But anyway, draw me this two before right here in the ground. Measured from the string to the edge of this uh, board. That's four inches. That's center of my post right there. Run me a plumb bob up there to my truss and if the wind would quit blowing you would see that it's it's pretty much dead on the edge of that board uh well i got it braced too right here let me back out a little bit i got it braced and i may or may not have braced it some i think somebody else braced it to that telephone pole oh uh, well there's another issue let me get way back off over yonder and i'll show you what the problem is well you can't see it uh, but up there on top, uh, the level, it don't lie. And she's, she's twisted, let's see, this way really bad. That top of the truss needs to go that way. And, uh, this pole right here, the second one from this corner, oh, it's out two to three inches at the top. We're going to have to shove it that away. Um, I done been up there with a, pipe trying to twist that back it ain't gonna it ain't gonna happen so what i'm gonna have to do is go ahead and uh i got my measurements from pole to pole and of course they're not the same it's 102 and a half here and 101 over yonder i'm gonna split the difference put me a brace out here in the middle on the bottom and then i uh, we're just gonna have to twist that thing and i'm gonna have to have some help that is for sure i'm just trying to do what i can until maybe i get help this afternoon we'll just have to see uh but anyway that's what i'm doing right now i'm gonna make me a uh brace for the bottom there and i'll get up there and see if i can't get it in place
Well, I got two braces on. That only took about three days. <laughs> tell you, it's slow going doing this by yourself. You know, I'm 12, 14 foot off the ground. Let me tell you this. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I ain't a fan of being up here. I guess, you know, the older you get, the less sure footage you get. Uh, you know, as I was younger, I used to be like a monkey. Well, <laughs> I'm more like a groundhog. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let me just show you how far out that truss is. About right there. It's inch inch and a half out needs to go yonder way on the top and i twisted her pretty good and well it didn't make no difference it may just have to stay like that i don't know um anyway i got i got this first one where it goes and then i got the second where it goes now because those are screwed down uh i would like to get a few more braces on get some on top at least before we set the next truss but uh i was i gotta wait till i get help because uh <laughs> i'm not a fan of being up here you know i just thought of something on you know both of them being you know twisted that away that bottom piece of angle iron that brace there running across there it is slotted i'm just wondering if we loosened one side up would that straighten it up a little bit uh might have to try that here in just a minute see what happens with it. loosening them bolts on that cross member right there yeah that accomplished absolutely nothing they're still just twisted as it was i don't know what to do about it i don't know if that's normal you know i know when you weld stuff it's gonna twist but that well i can't have that i ain't a fan of these trusses if i hadn't told y'all yet i ain't a fan of them the only thing i know to do is give me a real big heavy thick bar stick in there and just really wrench on them try to twist them back straight i don't know uh <laughs> i've gotten absolutely nothing accomplished today other than my knees and back are killing me from Climbing this scaffolding about 782 times. Yes, sir. about all I got accomplished. Uh, only thing I know to do is try it again tomorrow. I'm fixing to mow this hairy yard. It's getting pretty rough. Anyway, we'll hit it again tomorrow. Well, I don't know what day this is, but it rained yesterday and this morning, so it slowed us down. We didn't get nothing done yesterday. But I got two helpers today. I, he claims we're going to get, well, he claims we're going to have a roof on it tomorrow evening. And I've seen them work. They work pretty fast. Anyway, let me get on that crane. We'll get the trusses set today at least. Remember how I told y'all the other day that these two trusses were twisted and they needed to top up, need to go that way? Well, I just handed him a pipe and then we put a string running down that pole. He pulled on the pipe, I pulled on the string till we got it plumb. And I wrapped that rope around that tough one pole to hold it straight. And then he took the pipe, straightened this one out. It wasn't too bad. And now we're doing this in the same way. I don't know why the things are bent. I really don't. Uh, we're just trying to make the best of it that we can, though. I just want to show y'all real quick how they bolt together. There's two 7 16 bolts right there, and then you got this brace runs across here. Two bolts there, two bolts there, 
these are slotted we're leaving them loose until we get it up and get it straight then we'll tighten them up uh, a little later on now we're working on getting this third truss bolted to the poles uh we do have another issue though let me let me show you real quick when we used the pipe and the rope to twist that one straight well we pulled they're all connected we pulled them all that way at the peak so they're rainbowed i guess now uh ain't real sure what we're gonna do about that just yet may take that brace loose right there and if i had to i'll put a come along with a ratchet strap over there and, uh ratchet them that way hook it to the truck there and pull them that way i don't i really don't know why they're bowed like they are uh twisted but anyway Even this one right here, the one we just set, it ain't tied to nothing. It slipped right down in between the posts, didn't have to spread them out or nothing. And it's still rainbowed that way. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> well, I think what we're gonna do, once we get them all set and connected, we're gonna hook something to them, pull them that way and get them straightened up, hopefully. And then we'll just have to tie it off down here somewhere. I don't know. Uh, we'll get it figured out. Uh, do, do, do. Hey you, hey you guys, how are you doing in there? Well, we ain't got but one truss left to do. This is on the end. You gonna hook the tractor to it? Yeah, probably. And hey, we're <laughs> we're stuck right here. Can't go nowhere. I'm gonna have to hook my tractor to it. Hopefully, we can pull this thing out. Uh, they can't even get nothing done out here in this middle till we can pull that scaffolding this away. So. I'm gonna hook the tractor up, see what, see what we can do. Well, we figured out that that inside tire has come off the bead. So that's probably why it got stuck. It only had one tire grabbing. But we left the crane standing straight up, left all that weight on the back tire and it come out on its own. I didn't, I didn't do nothing with the tractor. Well, we got all the trusses up. We tied a rope over here to this end. We had to pull them all that way a little bit because it's just a little bit rainbowed. We got them straightened up pretty good. Good enough for 
good enough for what we do around here anyway. Well, we've been working and videoing so much that I just, well, I completely forgot to find an end point for this video. So I'm coming to you from the future three or four days. We're going to end right here. Uh, let me tell you, we've made lots of progress. I ain't going to show you. You'll have to wait till next video. We have made lots of progress, though. Yes, sir. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe. Share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blur, blurb.